Um, welcome to another Better Moments webinar. My name is Laura Graf and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager of Better Moments. Tonight it's Arne Hodalic, Better Moments expert and photo editor-in-chief of National Geographic Slovenia, who will share his knowledge about how to create a photo story for National Geographic. And he will also tell us more about his home country, Slovenia, where he, we will run a workshop with him next year in April. But before you get comfortable, a few notes from my side. For this webinar, we would like to encourage you to ask questions via the Q&A tool. You should find it at the bottom of your screen, otherwise you can access it via the main menu at the top. After the webinar, we will have a little Q&A session where Arne will answer your questions. So just keep them coming throughout the webinar and we will address them later. Yeah, I have a feeling that we will be quite an international party tonight. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and share your name and location with us in the chat to say hi to everybody else. And yeah, that's basically it from my side. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the presentation. Arne, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we'll start immediately. Uh, maybe some of you already know me because uh, I had a webinar yeah, a couple of months ago for Better Moments. But in any case, I will uh, present myself uh, and I will share the screen now with the... Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how to prepare a story for National Geographic. Okay, uh, I will present myself first uh, as my name is Arne Hovadaric. I'm working for NG uh, since 2005. Uh, I'm editor of NG Slovenia from 2006. Uh, I also teach photography uh, on three universities, two private and one state university. And of course, I do a lot, a lot of uh, cor course, photo courses, uh, workshops uh, around the globe and uh, for, for, for better moments. Uh, actually, we are doing two workshops together, one in Cuba and one uh, in Slovenia. This photo is from our last workshop when we went with the clients of uh, Better Moments. And Slovenia, uh, as Laura said, uh, will have in April uh, next year, hopefully. <laughs> so um, I, will, I will go straight to the subject because we have quite a lot of things to say. Um, what actually is a photo reportage, a photo story uh, for National Geographic? The rules are changing, of course. And you cannot say this is the rule. Uh, there are also different uh, subjects. Uh, for example, uh, if you do a, a story on national park or lions in the national park, of course, these rules uh, you cannot apply. That we will talk about today. <coughs> today, we cannot. You cannot apply to this kind of to this kind of story. And also, as I said, the, the rules are changing. But today, we will talk uh, basically about a classical National Geographic story with all the elements uh, that uh, you have to think about. Uh, if you want to do something like this and uh, also when you will uh, I'm sure there are some subscribers of National Geographic and I'm sure uh, You will see different maybe now the articles that are uh, coming every month uh, in your in your in your magazine So of course the first preparation should be from home uh, when you do a story home, I mean, you have to prepare everything, not everything, but a lot of things in advance, literature, all the information and all that. And then uh, only then you can start uh, to, to, to shoot, of course. Okay, now I will show you one uh, fantastic example. Th those photos are not my photos. I will explain you why later. Um, but. Uh, this photo or similar photo uh, won a photo contest uh, of Slovenia National Geographic. Uh, we said, wow, that's a great story. Uh, I didn't know the author uh, at that time, of course. Uh, and I called him and I said, look, your photo won the, the, the competition. We would really like to do a story uh, in our magazine. Uh, do, you have, do you have a story? And he said, of course, I have plenty of good pictures. I said, great, send them. 
So I will show you now. His name is Matej Vranic. He's one of the top Slovene, or I would say the top Slovene wildlife photographer. And I will show you now what did he send when I asked him for a story. Okay, that's him. I said, great, you have one shot. We have a shot. So where are the, where's the rest of the story? He said, uh, what, you don't like the photos? I said, yeah, that is one photo. And this is the most common mistake that practically all the photographers, uh, even the professional photographers are, are, are making. They have a certain set of, of, of photos of a certain subject, which are great, like those, they were all great. I, I'm, I'm sure you, you agree, but then you have to make a frame to put these main leading photos in the frame. So I ask him, well, we have one shot, but uh, where does this animal, I mean, this bird, uh, Kingfisher, where does he live? Ah, it's a beautiful creek, uh, dreamy. I said, oh, great, do you have pictures? No. Okay, do it. So he went back to the field and he starts shooting uh, according to our to our to our uh, demands, let's, let's put it like this. So this is the creek where he took the pictures. Before he didn't have these pictures. And then I said, "Is this bird flying around?" You know, he said, "Yeah, of course he's flying around. He's sitting with bird, with fish in mouth in the beak and stuff like that." So I said, "Do that as well." You know. So we will talk today about sets of photos and those photos came later and then uh, we publish we publish the, the the story and this is uh, the pdf from the story actually published N uh, i think you 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 did note one thing that this photo is cropped a bit strangely and it's kind of missing on the right side because we saw the photos before and i will explain later why uh, uh, this is so. This is a big mistake that the photographers are doing, so you have to be careful uh, when shooting for, for not, not just for National Geographic, for all the magazines. So this is now a very short story. I asked him also, uh, do, you, do you have um, nesting photos? Because in, with birds, you definitely need nesting photos, but this uh, species is protected and you're not allowed to take pictures, so we don't go into kind of criminal activities at National Geographic, and we kind of uh, abandoned that shot of, of, he could do it, but it's not allowed, so we won't do it. Okay, so now I will go, there are plenty of rules, uh, and this, these are two pages from a very thick manual that we editors, uh, we get, it's kind of for editors' eyes only. And there are plenty, plenty of rules. If we would go, if we would go through all those rules now, um, we would lose too much time and it, it would be too detailed. So I will apply those rules while showing you some examples, and then we'll think about, uh, we'll, you will think about the rules. Okay, first of all, we'll go back uh, to the, Actually, it's an open, uh, opening photo. It's not a cover photo. It's a big difference between cover and opener. We call it opener or opening photo, which means that this photo is published inside the magazine. And of course, cover is the cover of the magazine, but we'll discuss both. Main rule, if it's possible, of course, it's not always possible, but main rule is always take a vertic uh, horizontal and a vertical shot because you'll never know if you do something like this, you'll never know what you, will, you need later, you know. So for example, this is the, one of my shots uh, when I was doing uh, Tom Raiders uh, of Inca's Graves. I mean, grave robbers, actually. It was a great, great story published all around the world. And this is uh, kind of stolen, but already bought by a private guy, gold, like he has like 300 kilos 
of stolen uh, stolen gold from the Inca stones. Nobody saw these pictures, but okay. I mean, the, the, those objects, but uh, the pictures, yes, of course. But the objects, no, they are in the vault, and I did this in the vault. But look at this now. This one is a horizontal. So National Geographic uh, France used it as a cover. And then I, of course, did, a, um, oh, sorry, that was vertical, sorry. And this one is horizontal. A landscape photo, as we call it also, or a portrait photo. Um, so uh, they they use it as an opener uh, inside that. So they use the cover plus the opener inside the magazine. It's a double spread. Of course, yeah, I, 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 uh, here is so-called gutter. Gutter is something, uh, is a gap between the pages when you open. The problem is when we look at our photos like this, it looks fine. But once this is printed on a double spread, most of the, 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 the middle section of the photo goes inside the, the, the gutter and you cannot use it, uh, you cannot use a photo that are, um, that they have the main, where the main interest is in the center of the photo. And that was the case with the Kingfisher. He was all the time, when he was diving for this small fish, you saw many photos, he was all the time in the middle. So we kind of couldn't put it as a double spread opener, which would, uh, the, the photo would deserve, of course. So we kind of cut it on the side and still he's banging with his head in the gutter. This, when you don't see the magazine, you don't think about it. When you see the magazine, you say, oh, wow, this is, that is bad, you know? So, we will talk about sets of photos. There are, you have to think in sets or groups, whatever you call it. There are kind of similar photos. Of course, they are all photos of the same story, but doesn't have to be in your main activity. Actually, it is more difficult to make the frame, as we call it, of the story, than to shoot a few very interesting shots, like, for example, was with the Kingfisher. Uh, to do everything around took him much more time than uh, those fantastic shots of kingfish underwater. So we have to think a lot of things. This is a photo I took in the museum, a 16th century man. So we didn't like, a Slovenia and National Geographic, we didn't like the, the, the opener that um, French edition did, and we did our own uh, opener. And now I will explain a bit what opener has to be. Opener is a, a photo uh, which is, it has the, possibly the most information about our story. Everything, I mean, not everything, you cannot see everything, but a lot of things you have to see and subconsciously understand when you open the story. Sometimes uh, I, I, some of my photos, um, some, some of my stories, sorry, were not published uh, just because I didn't have the proper, the right opener. So anyway, look at this. This was the, this was the map that I did in, in uh, I think in Bolivia, in some museum anyway. And you can immediately see this is the Central America, Panama. The channel was, of course, not there in 17th century. And the title is in Slovene, but it's uh, Treasure Hunters. Um, so, uh, we know where we are, subconsciously we know where we are. And now if you look at this picture, look at the elements of this picture. And here is the gutter, of course, double spread, open. He has the golden statue in his hand. So we immediately know that we will talk about gold, rock, I mean, stolen gold from tombs and stuff like that. So he has a golden ring in his, on, on his uh, finger which means he's doing well. So it means he's a good robber kind of, you know, good Tomb Raider. Uh, and then the rest of the elements, blue jeans are always kind of a bit of adventure, belt, cowboy belt, army shirt, um, which immediately, or, or, or safari shirt, which immediately gives you a kind of open air activities, which Tomb Raiding is. And of course, the gun. Uh, the gun is not a fake one. We were all armed on this because it's, we went very high up in the mountains with the, these Tomb Raiders and that's a normal thing to be armed there. Uh, on many of my uh, reportages, 
I am armed because you need to be sometimes, not always, of course, but sometimes you need to be. Uh, that was um, something completely different, but uh, actually those arms were later used when we were attacked uh, by the pirates in South Philippine Sea, and it ended uh, quite badly uh, for them, of course. So now I will talk about how to find a story. Uh, this is actually not, not very easy, but um, most of the time, if you, if you rely on internet, internet, this is the first thing that everybody thinks now in these days, you know. Uh, but internet is a fantastic tool for finding a story, but listen carefully, not that you would find a story on the internet, but if you have something in your mind already, if you know something, if you got some information from somewhere and you Google it and there is nothing there, then you have a story. It happens to me once, uh, I Googled it, there was actually nothing. And once I did the story, many photographers later went there, did the story, and if you, if you type now the same, uh, the same uh, keywords, you get like, I think, three or 400 pages of hits for the same keyword, which means the story is dead for us. It has to be. That's why internet is a great thing. What I use a lot is scientific uh, magazines, culture, archaeology, ethnology, geography, uh, scientific. They, not, they never have good pictures. Try, uh, try to look at those magazines or, yeah, public publications mostly, yeah from universities, from libraries, scientific publications. And then they have maybe one picture or some new, whatever new in that field that you're interested is coming. And then you might have a story and then you go there and you do it. I look a lot for anniversaries. In anniversaries, of course, you have to do it a year in advance. Um, so, that's a good, good reason to do something, you know, connected with that anniversary, whatever. It has to be a more important anniversary or something. My, actually, my best story ever, best-selling story, I mean, I'm still getting money out of it. it it's from 93. It was anniversary of Kennedy's uh, assassination, and I, did the, and I was doing it the whole year in the United States. So that is a good idea. And what I do a lot, that's why we are standing so much on this picture for so long. I listen the gossips, the rumors. If I go there somewhere and I can, I, I, I have always open mind, open ears, ask people what is going on. So to go back to the story that we will talk about today a bit, this is um, Liet Island in Croatia. I was invited to take pictures of the ecological cleaning whatever cleaning of the of the of the sea bottom of plastic debris so this is plastic so the guys invited me and said look we don't have the money I said no problem i i will do it for free so we became friends i gave them all the pictures that they needed and then i said okay this was fun but do you have something better than this you know and they said yeah we have a lot of uh, antique uh, racks. Uh, they, they, they took me there and this, but then they said one thing, they said, what? We have uh, exploration going on uh, practically for the last, I don't know how many years, and you should join the Croatian uh, archaeologist to do, to do the story on that wreck. So now different sets for this, for the story that we will talk now. First of all, we always need to place our story somewhere, which means not somewhere, to place it where, where, where it is. So this is the wreck site. It, normally, of course, it's not written uh, on the photo. This is just for, for your information. The wreck site, which we were diving later, you will see we found it here. So the aerial photos, drone photos, uh, today, with drone, it's so easy to make aerial photos and you can, you can really see the, where we are. Normally people, they, once you're 
for a long time somewhere, you forget uh, that you are there and you're too concentrated on your story. And then you come home and everybody's asking you, where did you do these pictures? Where, how is there, where, where it is? And you say, oh, shit, I don't have the picture, you know? So you have to think about environment where your story is taking place. So this was first set. Next set, of course, I told you already, Rex diving. You do the, the, those photos on the boat. So the boat, archaeologists preparing. And later you will see, you will try to remember probably some of those photos that you're seeing now that you, they, they were published in later in National Geographic and in many more magazines as well. So you do um, photos on the boat, <coughs> sorry, on the boat, preparations before diving, archaeologists uh, looking at the equipment. Those photos are actually not even mine. Of Katya, my partner, did it because I was most of the time underwater because it was they were very long dives. The depth was over 50 meters, so there were two hours plus dives with the compressions, and um, so uh, I was not able. I was too tired to do this kind of photos. So that's why. so that was set of archaeologists on the boat, and of course only one photo will be published but you have to have a set, so you do a lot of everything. Okay, so the next one is, um, is a sketch, archeological sketch, uh, scientific sketch, and it's with all the numbers where it's something they were, they were um, guns, uh, these are guns, and those are the, 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 the object that they were found. It's a kind of tre a huge treasure you will see by yourself. So, the next set, close to this one, but still is the next set. It's uh, new technologies like 3D, um, like 3D, um, what do they call it, 3D models of, uh, it's a long procedure to do it, but it's good to see how it is. So uh, now, this is now the third set underwater which is the main set like this was the kingfisher underwater but this this is of course the main set but without those other sets around it's it's worth nothing actually so you can see the depth you can see that it's quite deep here the visibility was good so i was kind of for a, for maybe a week 10 days i was diving every day with our colleagues and and uh and, and and taking pictures remember this photo we will come again this photo and this one, no, yeah, something like that. So this is a set of underwater. What we were uh, looking for is a 16th century Venetian merchant boat that sank at that site where we saw uh, where we saw the, the the wreck site in the beginning, and it is full of today. It's a treasure. At that time, it was cargo. Again, remember this photo. Okay, so uh, the next set that was before on the boat was preparation, then was diving, and now the objects are coming out. Uh, maybe a quick, quick uh, information about the, the, the object. The boat was loaded with um, Ottoman's pottery, Iznik pottery, which is extremely rare. You can, each piece, you can look on the black market, of course, which is not the case here. Uh, it's from five to 30,000 euros. So we, talk, we are talking about millions now, uh, according to the number of objects that they found. So um, the objects are coming out of the water. So this is next set. They are cleaning them. Uh, you have to clean them quite quick of some, doesn't matter. It's, it's a procedure. But of course, only one photo will be published. And we go to the next set, restoration. It is uh, in the capital of Croatia, in Zagreb, who went a couple of times there, do the, the photos, and uh, actually this is when the objects are out already, they spend one year in uh, fresh water and uh, they are restored now. So now this is me, Katya took a picture of me. And the bowl that you will see here, 
you will see on the next picture. But this is in the basement of Mimara Museum, which is one of the biggest museum in Croatia. Uh, we had a deal with, of course, with the archaeologists. They were bringing me uh, objects, and I did a, a studio, um, portable studio in the in the in the cellar of the museum. And uh, for a couple of yeah, one day I think full day, a couple of uh, twelve hours, something like this. We were taking pictures on the on the on the. This is a special technique on the on the black black uh, plexiglass. So. Uh, what is, of course, also the message. Okay, you sometimes, you have to go out of your comfort zone. You're good in whatever, photos. You cannot stay there if you want to do classical National Geographic or other magazine stories. You have to know a lot of things about photography. So this is a part, only a small part of a, a treasure. Of course, those objects that we took out were not, they were not yet uh, restored, so I couldn't take pictures of them, but they, they, in previous years of exploration, they, they, they took some, some of the objects, uh, this pottery. Actually, the, the Ottomans, they kind of stole the recipe from Ming Dynasty of Chinese, and they started to do their own cobalt, not that good, but their own cobalt blue uh, pottery, which is very, very famous. You will see later in the next set. So this is, again, a set, a set of, Photos, uh, different photos means objects from that wreck of 16th century boat. This is not the Iznik pottery, but it's a it's a it's a plate from the boat. This they call it captain's plate because it's from 15th century from Venice. So it was actually the part of the and also this it was actually the part of the um, equipment, whatever kitchen equipment on that boat. There were a lot of coins. I do a special technique, which is quite rare. Not many people are using it. It's called axial light. If you will come one day to a workshop uh, with us, uh, I will teach you this. It's a very, actually very easy, but very effective uh, technique to take pictures of the coins and objects. So now we are in the next set of photos, which means the people that are not important for our stories, not important. And these are only the guests, uh, the, the, yeah, the guests of uh, exhibition because the, the, the objects from the boat were already exhibited in a few museums. And I went just for this, I went to Dubrovnik, spent two days there just to take these two pictures because it is another aspect of this story. And then we go on, archives. Archives is very important. This is a Battle of Lepanto painting. It happened 10 years uh, before our wreck, wreckage. And uh, the, the Christian Alliance, a lot of European, for the only time in that, uh, in that period of, 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 of history, they kind of, um, they were united. They attacked Ottomans and they completely uh, they completely kind of uh, demolished their, their fleet. But already 10 years later, they were trading with them. So a next, <clears throat> a next, uh, a next uh, thing is still archives, but to get this photo, you have to go to Padova. Again, a new trip just for one photo, which, which is the only boat that it looks apparently like the wreckage that uh, I took pictures of. And it's on the tomb of uh, Admiral Contarini in the, uh, in the Cathedral of Padova. So just for one picture, but you will see it was used because this is the only boat that kind of corresponds to the one. So what is very important, we saw already before the maps. This is a map of Piri Rice, uh, which was uh, Ottoman Admiral, and he drew it in uh, 1513, 1513, year 1513, means 16th century. And at the same time, he, in this book, it's a book of maps, it's this drawing picture, whatever you call it, and this is the island where our wreckage sank. And this, the wreckage site was here, and I took the picture of the wreckage site here from the top of the hill. So 
Then went to Istanbul. Why? Because Blue Mosque is deck. You, for sure, you heard about the Blue Mosque. This is apart from a wall decoration of the Blue Mosque. The whole Blue Mosque is uh, is uh, decorated with the tiles of Iznik ceramics. So it's not just the pottery. The pottery was just for kings and sultans and stuff like that. Only three thousand pieces around the world exist at the moment. And in Croatia, on that boat were already a few hundred of pieces found. So again, the tiles. And this is, again, another set. And another set, which was actually never used, but you never know. You have to take a lot. And then they don't use that much. I mean, we don't use that much as editors. Uh, so this is Isni Ceramics today. The, 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 the pottery factory, whatever tradition still is still there. They are still producing pottery. This is today's Isni Ceramics, which is, of course, a couple of euros each piece. It's on Bazaar in Istanbul. Okay, so now we are going to National Geographic. I mean, this was the story that was published like this. We got even a prize, which is called Best Edit. Best Edit means um, best... Uh, photo story of all the 40 uh, international editions. So it's kind of nice thing to get this kind of prize. Okay, so we have a, a vertical on the left. We have uh, a, a piece which is, we call it like freestanding. You know, you can put it on black and uh, take it out so you don't really see where it is on the, in the studio. Uh, and this is the opener. And then, of course, if you're talking about the treasures, to them, a lot of things a treasure. Yeah? Because the, the title was uh, sunken, treasure, sunken Treasure. And then, remember now all those photos. We saw this one, we saw those. So we are going in the story now. With this kind of small uh, details, uh, you can always, you can always uh, make the story more vivid, more, more appealing. Contarini's tomb, where we are, with the map, of course, that we can understand. This is here. The, 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 so the, the archaeologists starting to work underwater. The items are coming out. The items are here. The archives, both. I mean, one is kind of pattern, uh, and the other one is uh, archive, as we saw. Uh, uh, restoration objects and uh, the last the last photo the exhibition in Dubrovnik of those those items so now again I will show you this we saw already once or twice already but this one for example was used for diver magazine which has a huge circulation and inside the story was like this just four pages and the cover and then again I told you remember this picture this is the opener of the very, very good magazine Terra Mater, which is sponsored by uh, Red Bull, which is good for, <laughs> you know what? Red Bull, um, they have funds for, to, to finance good stories. Uh, so you see the opener, uh, the gutter, sorry. The gutter is going straight between the divers. You don't lose anything if you put it like this and it's open, opening photo. This one, not that good. I wouldn't put it like this, but they did. And then again, um, we saw all those pictures, all those photos, and you see that there are, uh, these are the sets that I was, I was talking, talking about. Even those are different, but they use it as a closing, as a closing photo. And that's, uh, that's me with my camera underwater with archaeologists and some, some another photographer took a picture. So now we are going to Slovenia. Slovenia will be the place for our next uh, workshop. So it's really good that I show some pictures and tell just a few things about Slovenia. And then we will go back to National Geographic and we'll see some of, the, uh, some of my stories from Slovenia published in the National Geographic. So this is it's really incredible country. It is a very tiny country. 
Uh, today I checked uh, on the internet, you can drive from the two furthest points in Slovenia in three and a half hours with the car. Uh, actually, if you're standing on the highest mountain, which is Triglau, uh, called Triglau in Slovenia, which is around 3,000 meters high, and on a very, very, very clear day, you can practically see, see with your own eyes, without a telescope, practically the whole Slovenia with all the borders. We have borders with Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. That is that tiny. And it's a huge, huge biodiversity. Uh, we have Alps, we have sea, uh, we are, we have, for example, from the capital, we go to ski in 40 minutes, uh, 50 minutes to the seaside and stuff like that. So it's a very, very, uh, let's say practical, practical country. It has excellent wine, wine and food. And also the safety is one of the, the, the safest countries in Europe. Uh, talking about terrorist attacks and stuff like that, when today everybody is thinking about this, you know. And also about crime, there is practically no crime. I mean, no, it's maybe too much, but no, it's a very, very safe country. Uh, it was put on the top seven list by Forbes magazines, top seven countries, globe, I mean worldwide, top seven countries for this year to visit. Of course, Corona mixed everything, but it is, um, Forbes magazine put it on the seven, seven. This is uh, a seaside, uh, Piran. We'll see this uh, city, um, city, village, whatever, um, for, during our workshop in April. So I took a bit of uh, photos and places that we will visit uh, in April. So this is capital. Everything is actually around the castle and the medieval uh, city here. Well, you could say everything in the center, in the old town, which is interesting. The rest is not interesting, not that interesting, but the old town is very, very interesting. You will see. You can reach in 10 to 15 minutes walk. Of course, there are no cars. It's only there are uh, pedestrian zones only. The cars are not entering the old city. And it's uh, constructed ar around the river. You saw the river from the high above. And these are uh, some bridges and some historical building. This is the center center of old uh, town. You see no cars, bikes, uh, walking distance, and the, and the castle. A bit from a different angle. And from the castle, you can do those kind of photos. And we'll do, we'll do those kind of photos as well during our, our workshop. We have fantastic uh, Orthodox Cathedral. Uh, we have... Um, uh, this is the normal cathedral, Christian cathedral, uh, with fantastic library from Baroque, Baroque uh, period. Uh, really fantastic thing to see. Uh, we have um, Art Deco, a lot of Art Deco uh, next to the medieval center. And then we are going out of the town. Uh, Slovenia is the second, I think, the second in Europe per percentage of forest. I think the first one is Norway or Sweden, something, and we are the second in the second place. And I think it's around close to 60, 70 percent of the uh, uh, the terrain ter terrain in uh, Slovenia is, is 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 forest. And we also have a uh, like uh, pristine forest, which nobody is allowed to go in, unfortunately. But we are keeping it for for yeah conservation reasons. A, a big chunk of forest, which you cannot enter. So the the biggest uh, attraction is uh, Blade Island. I mean, a blade uh, town and with this famous island, everybody goes here. But we, of course, us will also, will also go. This is the Socha Valley, which you can enter through the, through the, through the passes in the mountains. Uh, we'll see that as well. Of course, this is in the winter. This is Pradyama Castle, we'll visit. Pradyama Castle was put on first place by Discovery Channel, the first that was the first castle that they um, kind of present. And it's, a, according to them, the most interesting, and the history behind it, incredible, the most interesting castle in Europe, kind of. You know. they, they say this, not me, they said this. Uh, we'll go here as well. Uh, this is Sefnica Lake, uh, with some caves, castles, of course. Uh, and we'll do a short one-day course of, uh, of 
of caving photography in, uh, in, in Krishnayama, Krishna Cave. Uh, and at the end of the day, everybody has this kind of, this kind of photos and this as well. This is the region wine and food. Uh, and, um, and we'll go there as well. This, this kind of photography is, we call it flash for cash, but we have to do it sometimes, you know, it's for, for restaurants, for tourism and stuff like that. Um, so uh, we'll visit a lot of wine, uh, wine, uh, wine cellars. We'll try to find, and we will find locals, local crafts, craftsmen, uh, blacksmith, uh, meal, music, and stuff like that. So these are, uh, these are <laughs> my cat is uh, crying and she wants to go in, so that's why <laughs> I'm a bit nervous <laughs> what she's doing outside. Uh, she's not allowed to go in when I have webinars, so uh, she's, she's crying in front of my door. So that's why I got a bit upset. So um, these are my stories from National Geographic. This is the most important story that I did in my life, actually. This uh, was published in American, in American version, in American version, I mean, the, 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 the National Geographic American edition, the mother edition, like, like this. Uh, I was actually the first photographer from Slovenia published something, and this was the first story uh, about Slovenia in uh, National Geographic uh, USA. So I'm really very proud uh, because of that. And uh, until now, we are only two photographers in Slovenia. They published uh, stories in American edition of National Geographic. And it's about the river Ljubljanica. Very simple story. I'm not that very proud of the, how they did it, but it's in. <laughs> yeah, I would do it differently. Uh, but objects, important people, this is the main archaeologist, uh, maps, uh, more objects, uh, and of course the, uh, the text about archaeology in that river. This is one of very, very famous archaeological sites, and I'm still doing it. This was, this was not, this was published only in, in Slovene edition. Uh, but I'm still going to Ljubljanica River because it's so interesting, archaeologically so interesting, and I'm always uh, doing new stories and we publish like short stories. But again, look, first one, opener, the gutter, then the next one, archaeologist working there, this is the river, objects, uh, archive photos from 1890 when they discovered the same boat, this is Roman boat, 2,000 years old, and that one before is the, the same. Uh, and they discovered it in 1890. And this is the uh, 3D uh, high-end technology of, of this boat that we found a couple of years ago. And the same uh, uh, monoxyl one-piece boat uh, from first century BC, which is 2000 plus years old. And it's preserved like this in this river. This river is fantastic, but it would be too much to explain everything. So the next story was a story from the part of the Slovenia where we will go, uh, Socha River. Um, the tradition there is very alive. Um, this is, I would say, the most traditional carnival in Slovenia. But again, look through the sets of pictures. We have um, a devil, which, because they have like the bad ones and the good ones, like in all carnivals, of course. So this is the bad one, the, the ugly one, actually. They call, they call him the ugly one, which means the, the devil. And the whole thing is happening here. This is in the mountains around Socha Valley. Socha Valley is here behind our backs if we took a picture in that direction. So uh, this is the village where they do this. It's only one village in the host arena that they do this carnival, this special carnival. It's even uh, so important ethnologically and uh, historically that they, they put it on the stamps. Uh, archive photo from 1912, which is very old, but of course the, they 
the, the mask changed a bit, but we have the look inside how it was at that time. Every uh, participant of the carnival, young boys, young guys, unmarried, they should be unmarried, it's a very traditional thing. They have to make their own mask, right, with their own hands. So everybody is, um, is crafting whatever, carving their, uh, their wooden, uh, originally wooden mask uh, like this. So before the carnival, carnival, they, then they go around the village, the people, they offer them to eat, uh, they have music with them, and of course they kind of bless the house uh, with their visit during the carnival. It's quite common uh, tradition, but this, it's different because they are, they, the masks are different. So they have a special um, rituals, they pour um, ashes, uh, from fire, ashes from fire, wood fire, from people around, and then they kind of at the end, at the end of the carnival, the I think the fifth day of the carnival, because it lasts for a couple of days, they kind of catch the ugly one. Uh, they have a trial. This is a trial, trial of course, um, and then uh, he's responsible for the bad things that happened last in, in the previous year. And of course, they uh, they sentence him to death, and they they burned they burned the the the, the dummy of of of, of this uh, of this mask, and then at midnight everything has to stop, and the new new year it's not new year, but it's the year after the carnival starts at twelve o'clock should be finished. Uh, this we will also see. I I I, I did more stories of course for for Slovene national geographic but i'm showing you now only the, the stories that uh that we will we will prob most uh, no that we will see so this is the, the story this is the cover uh, and the opener is this that was the on the cover and this is inside the opener um we'll visit um traditional um making of they are actually uh honey biscuits but they are not for eating i mean you could eat them probably you would break your teeth but you could eat them uh, they are they are they are done like 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 biscuits from the honey pastry but they're mostly for decorating uh, decorating um, for decorational purposes and the tradition goes back to medieval ages it's, i think the first uh, written record is in 13 and something next uh, in uh, in slovenia in 14 something in 13 in austria so it's a tradition that it's around this area around alps uh, slovenia austria and czech, czech republic so again a, a set common people normal people you know on the on the marketplace uh, during the the, the the new year's time they do like stands and they sell this and before you saw and uh, how how they are doing it. So this is the master with the, um, his name is Perger, but the tradition from 1757, they started, uh, his family started this business. So of course, is the guy you should take pictures of. And uh, you know, it's a couple of hundred years of tradition, it's worse. So details of decorating. So then details, I mean, tabletop photography of each, of each different, though those are more, um, different regions have different ornaments, different colors. Uh, again, him, and we'll go we'll, with the better moments, we'll go uh, here to this workshop, which is on the other side of Slovenia, and uh, we'll take some pictures there because it's a very interesting procedure, very interesting. It's traditional and uh, real tradition, I would say, <laughs> put it like this. Okay, we'll go here as well. These are salt pans of Sochole. Again, we will look a bit the, um, the sets. Sochole, Piran. This is a salt making pans, uh, of course, in a traditional way. Very, very traditional way. Uh, so that's why you have archive photos. This, okay, it's a couple of years old, I mean, a couple of decades old picture and the new, that's my picture. 
but the, the salt pans here started, I don't know, in 15 something, 15 or 16 century. That was a fold, you know, like four spreads that you can fold in. Uh, and you, you see the whole, the whole, the whole salt pans here. Another set, the animals that are living here, including uh, uh, endemic fish, which lives only here because the salinity is too high for normal fish. And then you have uh, people working here. They, they use this kind of uh, sandals to walk. Then they still pack traditional salt. So it's another set. Traditionally, they pack handmade uh, with hands and handmade, yeah. The salt is also handmade, as you saw it. Uh, and then another picture of, uh, they adapt, of course, to, new, to new, new technologies and they have a kind of showroom, museum, whatever, inter, inter whatever, uh, with computers, of course. So there are, those are some pictures, aerial again, that you can see where we are. Again, aerial, this is, they all do by hand. Everything is handmade. Um, still aerial. And then this is from, from gr ground with, with tripods and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see, they're all, they're not too bad, those pictures that I'm showing you now. But of course, you have a lot of pictures. You have to have a lot of pictures and only a few are at the end published. This is sometimes a nightmare, but that's, that's how it is. You know, you have to do a lot of each set and then just few are published. So um, it's another story. It's actually my second biggest success uh, worldwide. It was presented in Perpignan uh, Visa pour l'image, which is the biggest photojournalistic uh, festival and it was uh, during the evening uh, projection, you know, with the names like Bresson, like uh, Nachtway, like Steve McCurry, stuff like that. So it was uh, a projection of this. And this is, uh, this is not, uh, now we're going to a bit, I said before the rules are changing. So now we are going to a bit different, differently composed story. Of course, this is, kind of, let's say, street photography in a way. You know? And it is the horrible conditions that the Roma gypsies are living in Slovenia, south of Slovenia. We won't go there. With no water, no running water.